In the early 2000s, horror gaming was in a golden age. There was trends and mentalities that allowed developers to make games smarter and scarier and allowed them to work around the limitations of the consoles like the PS2. We saw the best of Silent Hill and Resident Evil at this time, but there was much more than that. And today, I'd like to talk about one of my favourite game franchises out of that time, The Suffering. Hey guys, it's Spa Media here, and I am a man of many passions. But one of my biggest passions is horror gaming. That's why I bust out my PS2 occasionally, and on the regular, the top of my list for replay value is The Suffering. It was an action horror game that was built around two themes, haunted prisons, and the various ways people have died in an Alcatraz style prison island. Every enemy is a horrific mangled variation and visualisation of the way these people had died on this island. Some were built around death throw inmates and how they were killed, but others died through much more horrific acts. My three favourite creatures are the Slayer, a horrible stitched together group of body parts held together with pins and screws, with every limb ending in a gigantic blade, representing beheadings and shiv-related murders committed by inmates. The mainliners, who are oozing representations of those who died through lethal injection, their eyes replaced by sharp needles, and their bodies bombarded with syringes. These creatures are in constant pain, pain that they're a little bit too happy to share. In the noosemen, corpses hanging from a rope, their bodies are torn in half and their flesh is left to decompose. This creature is a true horror show, and it obviously stands for an old fashioned hanging, and all it wants to do is share the view from its last moments and show how painful its death truly is. One of my favourite features of the game is Clem's entries. They're discoverable pages of a journal that explain a man's experiences in the island with the creatures found there. They're presented with full audio. On a PS2 game, you have no idea how big a deal that was to me when I was young. I mean half the games at the time didn't even have full audio for its main storyline, and this was read by such a good voice actor, so if you ever wanted to find out more about the game's world and monsters. Feel free to watch a collection of these entries. They exist in videos on YouTube and I really do recommend them. But I think the brilliance of this game is the fact that it's an action horror game that has an entry point to psychological horror. I mean if you think about what made Silent Hill brilliant is that you could take it at face value and enjoy the story and the suspenseful gameplay. But if you look deeper and truly saw the character that was the world, the brilliance and psychology of the creatures are what was the true pleasure of the franchise. But to the general public, the average video game player, they don't have the patience or the level of thought required to invest their time into finding out more into researching what these creatures actually were. That's where the suffering really shines. You play through the game and everything's talked about ingrained in every moment of gameplay, from the flashbacks and hallucinations of the storyline to the sideline story that's not forced in tremendous amounts of exposition, but instead an exciting bonus for progressing through the game, something to enjoy whilst you're there. I think it's important to remember games like The Suffering. The graphics might not stand up anymore, and the gameplay might be old fashioned, but it really did have a fantastic way of telling the story. It's a game with multiple endings, but even in the early days of multiple ending storylines, they still understood how to make it work. They made it a mystery whether the main character had killed his family, and didn't throw haphazard clues to suggest one way or another. Only at the end did you find out, and it felt more like a reward for saving other inmates, or a punishment for being selfish. It's an element that doesn't get much respect in modern games. Modern games seem to leave multiple endings almost washed out, that no matter what you did, whether you haphazardly just did things, or you stuck to a good or bad ending, it was pretty much the same thing. I think the best modern representation of how you could compare The Suffering to Silent Hill is like the difference between Five Nights at Freddy's and Outlast. Silent Hill, like Outlast, had better graphics and it was a lot scarier. Out of the two, it stood the test of time phenomenally. But The Suffering, much like Five Nights at Freddy's, was never meant to be that. Its gameplay wasn't the most outstanding and the graphics might not be the best, but it gave us a world a meaningful experience, and a mystery that was easy to follow. It allowed us to pick up and play without a lot of difficulty, but it felt like a worthwhile experience. This video was never meant to be a review. It was meant to just be a throwback to a really interesting game franchise. I think it should get a remaster, I think that it's a forgotten franchise that really should get more of a spotlight, and I'd really like to see what today's market would make of a franchise like The Suffering. But I suppose that's all I wanted to say. You can still find copies on Amazon, it's definitely worth maybe 20, 30 pounds, maybe 40 bucks in America, I'm not entirely sure about how the money translates, but for me it'll stay with me forever. Do you guys have any franchises that you'd like to see return? Or even an old classic that you like to pull out of the cupboard once in a while? 
Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps my channel grow. You guys have helped me out phenomenally. I mean, it took me almost two years to get my first 100 subscribers, and now I'm almost at 200 with about three months of difference. It really gives me hope, and you've really made me happy. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time.